Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome and welcome back to another episode of Format Podcast. Got a pretty interesting show for you here today on this throwback Thursday. We're going to talk one of the greatest basketball players of all time and a guy who honestly, for my generation and below, it doesn't even seem like he was real. It, it almost seems like he was mythical. So we are going to talk the big dipper himself, Wilt Chamberlain. But before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you're here on YouTube and you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead, click that like, that subscribe, that notification bell. Make sure you're kept up to date whenever we drop new content on the channel. If you want the audio only version of the podcast, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, and we should come right up. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you give us that like, that five star review, and drop a comment. All that stuff helps us rise in the algorithm, helps us find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. And finally, make sure you write it down, put it in your phone, set an alarm. Do whatever you got to do to remember Saturday nights at 7 p.m. We are live here on the Format Podcast, and we'll give you the opportunity to call in, talk to us, get at me. I love it. I can't wait. All right. So um, recently, um, if you're here on the channel and, and you're not new, I did a show uh, probably a couple weeks ago about uh, the great Rick Barry, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, who probably doesn't get his due in the modern era for a number of reasons. But um, he had some interesting commentary to make. And I did a show about that, kind of talking about what he had to say. And um, it actually it, it drew a lot more attention than I expected. And so I really appreciate that. And, but what really got me was a whole bunch of times in the comments and uh, I think it's probably about a thousand comments or something like that. I kept hearing one refrain over and over. Could you imagine Will being Will Chamberlain in the NBA today? I kept hearing Will, Will, Will. Imagine what Will would do in the NBA today. Can you imagine Will in the NBA today? And so, um, like I said in the intro, uh, Will Chamberlain, otherwise known as the Big Dipper, is I mean, he's clearly one of the greatest basketball players of all time, one of the most physically dominant players of all time. He put up numbers that are inconceivable. Um, and to my generation, like I said, this is a guy, he's almost like Paul Bunyan. Like the stuff that he did, just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem possible to the point that I guess a lot of people have to find a way to, to denigrate it and degrade it because it was just that otherworldly. For instance, I think he currently holds uh 72 records in the nba record book 68 of them individual so i guess the other four are like shared so just imagine 68 individual records will chamberlain holds it is absurd the stuff that this guy was doing you go through and you start looking at the stats and all that and we'll get to that in a little bit but you look at everything will chamberlain was doing it doesn't even make sense how ridiculous this guy was and the first thing i think that kind of got me like in doing some research about Wilt, and I knew some stuff about Wilt before, is I think he's the only guy in two professional sports for Hall of Fames, right? So he's in the World Volleyball Hall of Fame, and of course he's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Cool. Um, the other thing, when you look at him in college, he was an All-American in volleyball, of course basketball, and of course track and field. He set um, at uh, University of Kansas, he set records that stood for like 20 years in different track and field events. So it's really absurd what he was doing. Um, you look at this guy and at seven foot one, he ran a sub 11 second 100 meter dash. Now, for those of you saying, well, that's slow. Usain Bolt ran uh, the 100 meters and set the world record in 958. First of all, he set that world record in 958 in like 2013. So that was like 60 years later. <laughs> Obviously, guys were running, um, you know, a lot slower back then. But even even still, part of the reason that we're so astounded by Usain Bolt and his insane feats of speed is why? Because he's six foot five. And if you know anything about uh, short sprint races, there are different phases. And one of those is, you know, I don't remember the technical names, but um, when you're getting out of the block and you're seven feet one or you're six foot five, basically like unfolding your body being that tall and then getting into the full sprint phase, that's a very difficult endeavor. So to be able to get out of the block, unfold your body, have the coordination and then be able to really open up to outrun people is absolutely incredible from a technical sprinting standpoint. Remember, they didn't even want Usain Bolt to run the 100 meters because of his height. So now you take that and you put Will Chamberlain at, you know, seven foot one running 100 meters. That's absurd to think that he was under 11 seconds. Um, just just amazing. Uh, so Will Chamberlain is All-American in three sports at uh, Kansas University, KU. Then um, he leaves early, goes, uh, I think, plays a year with a uh, year or two with the Harlem Globetrotters traveling around doing that. And then, of course, 
he hits the NBA where <laughs> Uh, he becomes Paul Bunyan and his Blue Ox Babe, right? Again, the, the feats were absolutely incredible. And so you look at just the, the things that uh, Wilt was doing, and it doesn't even make sense. This is a guy who, through his first eight seasons, averaged 40 points and 26 rebounds per game. Does that sound like it makes any sense whatsoever? 40 points and 26 rebounds per game. Now, for those of you who are going to say, well, uh, the league was only eight teams back then and uh, the talent wasn't that good. Okay, you can argue that, but you can also argue that with so many fewer teams, the talent pool was much more concentrated. So it was harder to dominate on that level. And the scary thing about Wilt, this is what we look at. By the way, you always hear about uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar having the only unstoppable shot. We just saw in the clip there, Wilt Chamberlain rejected, and this is not an old Kareem, he rejected a young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Well, I guess Lou Alcindor at that time, still playing with the Bucks. But he rejected the skyhook. And that was, you know, a comparably old Wilt Chamberlain playing there with the headband with the Lakers. But um, Wilt was just absolutely incredible. And one of the things to me that's ridiculous and beyond the pale is that there's nothing on the court that Wilt couldn't do if he wanted to do. Like, obviously, I talked about his first eight years averaging 40 points a game. And unfortunately, only one championship came out of that for him. But um, you talk about all that scoring and then people were saying, well, all he wants to do is score. He's a selfish player. Wilt says, OK, cool. I, I don't. OK, all I want to do is score. So he drops his scoring down to, I think, 24 points a game and turns around and leads the league in assist. Like Wilt was a the guy. There was nothing on the floor that he couldn't do. And I think. um well, I know for a fact that when he was playing, block shots were not a recorded stat, but I believe someone came up with the number, did the math, and I guess watched a lot of game film and said that he would have averaged um, over eight blocks per game, more than eight blocks per game, had he uh, had stats, uh, had blocks as a recorded stat back then, which, I mean, <laughs> that, does, that doesn't make any sense at all, right? So he would have blown the block shots record out of the water um, held by the great uh, Hakeem Olajuwon. Now, that, that record wouldn't, it wouldn't even have been approachable. And so this is so funny because Wilt always talks about, well, not always talks about, but one thing he had said was if he had knew that anyone was going to get near his scoring record, he would have put it out of reach. <laughs> and again, scary, right? Um, this is a guy who I think averages 23 rebounds uh, per game for his career. 23 rebounds a game for his career. That's even after he was old and slowing down and playing with the Lakers. I mean, there's, there's just... There's no rational explanation for how good Wilt was. Now, the only thing you can argue, and I'll, I'll give both sides of this, the only thing you can argue is that, I, I want to say in 1962, I'll look this up, the average height of an NBA basketball player was 6'5 and a half. Will Chamberlain was 7'1". So you can say he was um, uh, much, much uh, taller, bigger, and stronger, and faster than everybody else. But, I mean, they were throwing body after body at this guy. So here's one of the scary things, right? In his 1962 season where he scored the legendary 100 points against the New York Knicks. Now, a <laughs> quick note, that game right there is so legendary that there's a lot of people who think that it didn't happen because they can't conceive of a guy scoring 100 points with no threes just dominating like that. I think he scored 59 points in the second half of that game. Again, mythical Paul Bunyan, Blue Ox Babe, doesn't even make sense. So anyway... Uh, during that season, he averaged 50 points a game, another NBA record, right? So that's two I've mentioned just in the last <laughs> five or 10 seconds. So he averaged 50 points a game and I think 27 rebounds. Again, makes no sense. Uh, single game rebounding record, 55 rebounds in one game. Think about it. Today, if we see a guy get 20 rebounds, we're like, dang, he put in work. 25 rebounds, whoo, got busy. 30 rebounds we've seen. Man, he got to be dead. <laughs> 55 rebounds in one game. Um, that was the same season, that 1962 season. To me, this is one of the most amazing stats. Will Chamberlain played every single minute of regulation and some overtime. He averaged 48.5 minutes per game that season. Uh, I mean, what what do you do with those type of numbers? What do you do? It, again, doesn't sound real. And this is a guy that was just... Everybody talks that well, not everybody, I guess, um, you know, the, the older people who are around to see that stuff, they talk about how incredible Will was, um, how he could run the floor like a deer, kind of like um, we look at a guy like David Robinson or Hakeem Olajuwon, how those guys ran the floor, even a young Shaq and Will Chamberlain was outrunning all of them. But then you talk about the legendary strength this guy had. Now, this is funny because um, after 
uh, Wilt Chamberlain finished playing basketball. He went on. He did some movie roles and stuff like that. And one of the strongest guys we know, one of the guys we know that historically is just so incredible when it comes to working out and strength and body and all that is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he had some comments about Wilt. Check this out. Will Chamberlain would be in the gym. We eventually ended up doing a movie together. Yeah, Conan. Uh, yeah, Conan the, the Destroyer, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I was a big fan of his because he came to the gym and he would do a tricep extension that like the big guys, the strongest guys would do, let's say, 120 pounds, let's say, tricep extension pulling down, right? He would come and he would do 150, 170 pounds. Will Chamberlain. That's how strong he was. I remember that he lifted me up like with one arm like nothing. So Arnold is saying the strong guys are doing tricep extensions of 120 pounds and Will Chamberlain is doing 150, 170. Now, obviously, I'm far from a world class, class athlete, never claimed to be. But uh, at my best, I was doing about uh, with tricep extensions when I was really in good shape, doing about 100 pounds. So j just imagine, I, I can't even think about adding another 70 pounds onto that. My arms probably would have exploded right <laughs> at the elbows. But Wilt is doing that with ease. Arnold also says in a different interview that when uh, he was filming Conan the Destroyer with Will Chamberlain, um, uh, Andre the Giant um, was also around. They were filming it in Mexico City. And at the time, Andre was wrestling in Mexico. And so, you know, both of those guys wanted to show Arnold how strong they were. And Wilt Chamberlain, Arnold said that he saw him routinely bench pressing in between, you know, filming, filming the movie, bench pressing 500 pounds. And Wilt doesn't look that big. He doesn't look that diesel, but his strength is legendary. Um, there's stories from other NBA guys who played against Wilt that he literally, you know, grabbed the guy with his arm out straight and lifted him with one arm. A grown man, you know, a 250 pound man just lifted him and moved him with his arm out straight with one arm. And so, I mean, the stories go on and on. I'm sure as is human nature, there's going to be some exaggeration there. But again, with the physical feats that we've seen Wilt do and the physical things that we know that he did, uh, there's no reason to doubt it. I mean, the guy was just absolutely incredible. Uh, so again, like you look at it and, and you're saying 72 records and 68 individually held. Nobody holds more records than that. Um, you look at what he did in college as a track and field athlete. Then you look at him being a member of two professional sports uh, Hall of Fames. I mean, um, this is funny. Uh, Will Chamberlain, I believe, retired in 1974. And in 1984 and 1985, NBA teams were still calling him to see if he would come back and play. Like, that is the type of dude this was. Um, there's also a story. Uh, Magic Johnson, we know about his summer pickup games in L.A., and uh, so he was at UCLA and at the time Larry Brown was coaching there. And so Will Chamberlain and some of Larry Brown's uh, uh, players from UCLA were playing against Magic and a team of his guys. And so Magic comes down and he shoots and uh, Will Chamberlain blocks it and Magic's like, that's a goaltend. And we know Magic is also, even though he's always smiling, he's notoriously competitive. He's like, that's a goaltend because I think it was point game or whatever. And so uh, you know, Wilt was like, it wasn't a goal 10. It wasn't a goal 10. So Magic, hey, hey, Coach Brown, you know, was that a goal 10? So Larry Brown's like, no, it's not a goal 10. And so, of course, Magic is like, well, that's your guy. Those are your guys and your players. You're not going to call it. So Wilt says, okay, cool. No problem. We're going to play it back again. Nobody else is scoring on this end of the floor. And apparently, according to multiple people who were there, Wilt Chamberlain blocked everything that came into the lane for the rest of that game and nobody could get anything. And this is now, this is in the 80s when Magic is at the peak of his powers and Will Chamberlain is, you know, a lot older than he was when he played and he was still completely dominating, shutting down an entire lane and an entire half of the floor. So it, it is wild, man. It is wild, the stuff you hear about Will Chamberlain. Again, it doesn't even make any sense. Um, a lot of the uh, older NBA fans will tell you that Wilt is the greatest basketball player of all time, Wilt or Oscar Robertson. And again, I don't argue that because I, I didn't see those guys. I don't know how good they were or were not. Um, I think regardless of the conditions, and I got to give this credit to the modern players too, because I always talk about the conditions being different, allowing them to do what they did. But what Wilt did was just so otherworldly that it, like you can't even argue it. And I remember one thing, he, another thing that he said when it came to the GOAT debate, Michael Jordan and whatnot, this was interesting and Mike really can't even say anything about this as great as he was. And I do believe Michael Jordan was the GOAT, but Wilt Chamberlain said 
they changed the rules to help you. They changed the rules to stop me. <laughs> I mean, that's that's wild. I mean, one of the things they did, Will Chamberlain apparently dunked from the free throw line, so they wouldn't allow you to dunk on free throw attempts anymore. Um, the lane used to be a lot more narrow. They widened out the lane to try and keep him from dominating the way he was. So, I mean, Will Chamberlain has had such a profound effect on the game of basketball. Uh, he was so incredible. He was, I mean, a, I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say at this point. Um, you go on YouTube and, and check out the stuff he was doing, or you can look it up to see all the different records he has or look at his numbers, which, again, are just absolutely absurd. Um, just just think about it. I'm going to go out on this one again. Um, 50 points per game for an entire season. Never missed a minute for an entire season. I mean, that's it. We talk about LeBron James and his 40,000 point career, which again, no one has ever seen before and is absolutely phenomenal. Just an incredible, indelible mark. And I, I really mean it when I say I don't believe anyone is going to break his scoring record because what he's doing at this age is just, that's also inhuman. But when you talk about uh, Wilt and what he would have done if he had decided to man listen it would have been bad um, yeah that's it but um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this show just talking about Wilt and, and taking it back there's going to be more of these throwback Thursdays we're going to take it back and talk about um, players from back in the day whether it's in the NFL or whether it's in the NBA and just you know uh, show some love to a lot of the guys that don't get the love that they deserve so um, leave your comments in the comment section can't wait to hear from you uh, make sure you check in with us uh, Saturday night for the call in show the live and uh, yeah I'll be back with you next time and I'm out peace